there, my name's Claire and this is Stitch Home Sew. Thank you so much for joining me today for episode 7 of Friday Sews. Today I'm going to be talking about what I've been up to this week in terms of sewing. Big hint, my Nova coat. Some things that have arrived in the post, some Instagram challenges that I'm taking part in and some what plans I've got for the rest of the week. So if that interests you, please stick around with me today. Before I get started though, as usual, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody that's been watching my videos, to all of you that have liked and commented and subscribed. Thank you so much. I do really, really appreciate it. I've had a little flurry of new subscribers recently, so thank you so much for joining up in with me and um, welcome. And to any of my existing subscribers, thank you for joining me again this week. If you do like what you see today, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you do hear about any future vlogs. But also, if you do have any comments to leave me in the box below, I really do enjoy chatting to you there. It's so amazing to see um, all the comments that come in. And I love seeing about the how far my videos are reaching as well. So just drop me a note to just to tell me where you're watching from. I'd love to really kind of see how far they're reaching. I love the fact for YouTube, the fact that everyone's watching all over the world. It's so lovely. Anyway, I will get on with today's vlog. So on to my makes for this week. I haven't done a huge amount of sewing, but I have finished my Nova Coat. That's the Nova Coat by Paper Cut Patterns. Um, this coat used to be known as the Sapporo coat, um, but they rebranded, I think, after they did um, introduce their curve range. And uh, so it's now known as the as the Nova coat. Um, but you might have it in your stash and you're thinking, oh, I recognise that. And it was, as I say, originally named the Sapporo coat. So I thought whilst I was talking about the Nova coat today, I might as well just do a little mini review with you of of my thoughts and feelings about the coat. The f first of all, I'll just chat through the sizes. Now it's a really um, size inclusive pattern, this one. And I'm just gonna, be, if you see me glancing over, I've just got the sizes written down. Um, so just bear with me. So there are two size bandings. The first one, the bust goes from a 29.9 inch bust, um, a 22 inch waist and a 32.3 inch hip and the size 8 goes up to a 46.5 inch bust, a 38.5 inch waist and a 48.8 inch hip. And then with the curve range, which their sizes run uh, from 6 to 14, their, the smaller size is a bust of 41.7, an upper bust of 37.7, a waist of 35 and a hip of 44.9 inches. And then the, the size 14 in their sizes that is, uh, goes for is a bust of 60.6, an upper bust of 56.7, a waist of 54 and a hip of 63.7. So a really lovely size inclusive pattern, which is great to see. Uh, and uh, I think they've got a number of their patterns now. I'm not sure whether they're all of them, but definitely a good number of their pattern in the curve range as well. So that's really great. So you'll be able to see my Nova coat hanging up in the background over there. I will be popping in some pictures as well and I'll bring it over in a second so that we can talk about some of the finer details in relation to it. In terms of the pattern itself, I thought the pattern was great. Um, I thought the instructions were really clear um, and concise. There's, lot, there's um, written instructions for each stage and little diagrams. And then on their uh, website, they've also got a sort of a sew along in, in photo form, which I refer to on a couple of occasions when I just wanted to sort of double check that I was doing it right. Um, I think I mentioned last week that I actually prefer a combination um, of diagrams with along with the, obviously the written instructions and photos. So being able to use sort of both media there, that was really useful to me. I really enjoyed that. Right, I'm just going to grab the coat and I'll be back with you shortly. 
so the fabric that I used for my Nova coat was this lovely blue uh, fabric. It's a viscose wool fabric that I bought from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn. It was a really reasonably priced um, fabric. I can't remember off the top of my head how much it was, but I don't think it was more than sort of eight pound a meter. It was possibly less than that, but it was really very reasonably priced and um, it was an absolute dream to sew with. It was, it didn't fray. Um, it was really sort of stable. It, it sewed up, it's a, you know, the needle went through it really easily. Um, yeah, I just really, I really enjoyed sewing uh, the outer layer. I thought that was really lovely. And the inner fabric um, is a viscose fabric with this uh, pink background with the, so these blue sort of flowery bits on and there's a little, sort of little hint of red in between as well, which is really nice. Now, um, this fabric I bought from a D-stash and but I know that um, several months ago now that was in a So Haley Jane uh, subscription box box. Um, so I think that's where um, it sort of originated from. And um, I think it goes really well with this lovely fabric from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn. Um, and I'm really kind of pleased with those two together. I think they look really lovely. So in terms of adjustments that I made to the coat, I only made one adjustment, which was to lengthen the sleeve by about what, about an inch, I think I did. Um, so what I did is I lengthened my pattern piece. I literally just put an inch on at the end of the cuff because I knew that the, the cuffs were quite wide anyway, so it wouldn't be too much of a problem, sort of, um, it wouldn't bring it in too tight. Um, and then, so once I put the sleeve in, I put the coat on obviously to check the length of the sleeve to see if it was okay with the idea that if it, I felt that it, was, it wasn't it was necessary, I didn't need that extra inch, I could cut it off at that point. I decided to keep the inch, It I think it was a good length on me. So what I needed to do was just tweak the, um, oh, what do you call this, facing, goodness me, facing, um, by about a centimetre on either side. So that was really simple to do. So that was the only kind of major, not even a major adjustment, is it? Little adjustment that I made. And the only other addition I did was to add this hanging loop on, and obviously I've added a little label as well. Um, in terms of the hanging loop, all I did was took a tiny bit of this fabric, I folded it, uh, over and then over again and then I've just done two rows of top stitching and then I just basted it on to the neck facing so that when I sandwiched the um, lining and the fabric together uh, obviously it then came out on the right side uh, so that's worked really well I'm, I'm quite pleased with that uh, the label is says life is colorful and that is from little rosy cheeks uh, she does an absolutely beautiful range of sewing labels. I think there might be some for people that do knitting as well. I'm not sure on that one, don't quote me on that. But there's definitely a lovely range of sewing labels, all different um, types of um, sayings on there. And, you know, and obviously things that say sort of handmade and all that sort of kind of thing. And uh, made by mummy and ones that I've used before when I've made stuff for my boys and things. So, yeah, those are really lovely. And I just think it just kind of adds an extra something to it when you can add a little label of your own. I would have liked a little nice handmade type label, but I didn't have any in my stash that I thought went particularly nicely with this one. So I maybe I'll add one at another point and I've just hand sewn that on because I didn't want to see any of the, the stitching but in the past I have sewn them on to to other garments but this particular one I decided just to 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 hand sew that one on. I really really enjoyed making this coat uh, it's it, as I've said for any of you that have watched my previous vlogs before I was quite nervous about starting the coat and I've been talking about it for several months now and I shouldn't have been nervous about it because it wasn't any harder to make 
than any other uh, thing that I've made really. I'm, I'm not quite sure what the pattern suggests it is in terms of level. I'm just going to have a quick look at that pattern. So paper cut patterns classes this as a intermediate level. So their levels seem to be novice, intermediate and advanced. Uh, so I would say that it was kind of uh, an advanced beginner type pattern really. Um, as long as you've made a few garments and you've got a few of those sort of skills under your belt, you've tried sort of under stitching and that sort of thing. Um, it's not a difficult pattern to follow. It's very sort of intuitive of what you need to do on the next steps. There's nothing kind of out of the ordinary. Then no, there's no closures to worry about, no zips or buttons to have to struggle with. Uh, it's a really good coat, I think, to try as your first attempt into coat making, which it was obviously for myself. And um, I definitely recommend it from that point of view. As I say, the, the, the pattern instructions were really easy to follow along with and I'm, I'm really sort of pleased with how I've managed to sew it up. Uh, there's nothing that I'm, I'm too concerned about in terms of that has gone wrong or anything. And um, yeah, I'm really, really pleased. It was a really enjoyable make. In terms of what I think of the finished make, now this is no reflection on the pattern itself, um, but I'm not completely convinced by it um, in terms of how it looks on myself. Now it is an oversized pattern and it's supposed to be that, um, but I still, I feel like it kind of is a bit big up top, not so much around the hips because my hips are bigger, um, but up top, maybe I should have done some, some grading or something. Um, I don't know, it feels a bit voluminous. Maybe I just need to get used to it. Maybe I need to, s to think about how I'm gonna style it, etc. Have you got any thoughts? Can you drop me any comments? What do you think of it? Uh, constructive criticism <laughs> or constructive thoughts um, would be lovely. Um, yeah, I'm just not completely convinced by it, which I'm, I'm a little disappointed by because, as I say, I really like the, uh, the sort of the general finish of it. I love the fabric. I think it's beautiful. So and I would really like to love it more than I do. Uh, so I just need to. Maybe I just need to warm up to it. I don't know. Or maybe I needed to make some tweaks to the pattern. Let me know what you think about it that would be lovely. Next I thought I'd talk about some of the things that have arrived in the post this week. Last week I spoke about a pattern that I'd ordered from Fabuloso, a, a pattern printing company and um, I that has arrived and I promised that I would talk through my thoughts on that pattern printing company. Um, Fabuloso don't print on your sort of standard copier paper weight paper they print on um, like a tissue paper based paper it's not as thin as uh, like the big four patterns but obviously isn't as thick as like sort of photocopier type paper uh, I was really pleased um, with the service that Fabuloso provided uh, it came, the pattern came really quickly um, they had they emailed me to let me know obviously that it had been dispatched but also they'd sent me a separate email just to let me know that I'd asked them to print it in just sort of one size but the pattern itself didn't actually have the layering option to allow for that so they'd sent me an email just to let me know that they weren't able to do that which I thought was really lovely they didn't need to do that but I think that's a really good sign of customer service. The pattern itself arrived in this hard backed envelope which I thought was really lovely and um, it's just kind of got the obviously the symbol label on the front. Uh, I ordered just the one pattern from, from Fabulo. So uh, I, although I imagine you could fit a couple at least in this particular um, envelope. And I'm sure if you were ordering more, obviously they would just um, package it equally well, but just in a larger envelope. The pattern itself, as I said, this is just sort of an off cut because I have actually already cut out the pattern. 
is on this sort of tissue paper and the, the best thing about the fact that it's on this tissue paper is that it takes up considerably less room than if it's on a, a copy paper, an AO copy paper um, print because and I was really quite shocked by how much less room it, it takes up. People have spoken about that on, on their channel, uh, channels and on Instagram, but and I hadn't really appreciated about how much of a difference it takes up in space. So my pattern is actually in this envelope, albeit that I have sort of cut my pattern pieces up, um, but they are... Um, but even still, it was just a very small amount of size that they took up and it easily sort of fits in this envelope, which I also ordered from them as well, um, which just kind of obviously allows you to put the pattern details on the size, your seam allowance, any notions and requirements that you might need sort of as a prompt from yourself and any other further notes. And it's also got a sort of box for how many times you've made it. And because I was ordering for the first time, I, I, I went for the envelope to see what that was all about. And I also ordered the instructions to be printed by them as well. I won't necessarily do that every single time I order with them. Um, obviously, it, I would be ordering mainly for the, the AO copies, but I thought it was nice on the first time to kind of see uh, the quality of the other things. So this, this kind of gives you an idea of this is the kind of usual weight that you would get normal um, printed copies back in when you when you send them off to be printed. So it's sort of considerably thinner weight, the actual sort of tissue paper, but it all fits so nicely in this envelope, um, which is just so much smaller than any other pattern that I've had printed or that I've you know printed off and stuck together myself so it's definitely something I would um, look to do in the future uh, so that is fabuloso. Now the next thing that came through the post this week was my secret sewing swap present that's quite difficult to say um, I I know it's a little bit late uh, Christmas has sort of been and gone um, but for whatever reason my uh, swap partner um, wasn't able to uh, send the present and uh, so I'd got in contact with Gemma who was running the, the sewing swap. She is sewing in pyjamas on Instagram and just said um, that I hadn't uh, received anything and would she mind sort of looking into things. So she looked into things for me um, and as it turned out she asked what she calls one of her angels to send me a present to send me a gift which was really lovely of her to sort out I'm very very thankful to her and it arrived this week and I was absolutely delighted I was having a bit of a naff day a bit of a blur day and this really really cheered me up so the first thing that was in the, the parcel was this lovely jersey fabric it's actually a French terry fabric um, and it's this sort of tealy acry kind of colour base uh, with these dinosaurs on and so um, if you've watched my previous videos before I've got two boys so uh, they are going to love this fabric and I'll definitely be sewing something up for, for one of them. I don't think I've got quite enough to sew up for both of them, possibly haven't got enough for my older um, son, uh, possibly have um, but definitely some, enough to make something for my younger one. So we'll just have to see what I can get out of this one. Maybe if I did some colour blocking or something, then I could, and combined it maybe with some black. Hmm. Inspiration hitting me as I'm talking to you. Um, then maybe I would be able to make something up for both of them, which would be quite cute. And the other thing um, that was in the parcel were these beautiful pattern weights. Now it came with a sort of band wrapped around it. Well, I won't put that on on because it was really difficult to get off um, but these beautiful beautiful pattern weights and they've all got sort of sewing notions um, on uh, so there's one with some cotton reels as a um, tape measure some thimbles and some scissors and they're just so beautiful 
they really are I was so delighted with them and as I say it just made my day on a day that was a was a little bit on the naff side so thank you so much to my lovely angel I did say thank you to you on on Instagram um, and thank you to Gemma for organizing things and my lovely angel wrote me a lovely note as well so thank you so so much it was really really lovely of you so next I wanted to talk about some upcoming Instagram YouTube challenges that are happening um, mainly in the month of March but I wanted to kind of give you the heads up if you haven't heard about them you probably have they're quite big playing um, challenges but I just thought I'd let you know that I was taking part in them now the first one is um, being run by Sam from Frugalissima and Ruan who is the Yorkshire So Girl and last year they ran uh, the Frugal Fox Challenge. Now this year they're doing a similar challenge, slightly different in the fact that it's not just dresses, uh, it can be any garment and it can be for men or women or children um, as well. The challenge this year is called uh, the hashtag so Frugal 22 So the idea with this one is that you sew up a garment using a free pattern and using uh, fabric from your stash. So rather than going out and buying more fabric, you're being frugal by using A, a free pattern and B, fabric that you already own. So that could be fabric from your stash or it could be uh, a duvet or some old curtains. I mean, let's think about Sound of Music here, classic. I, d I genuinely don't know how she managed to get quite so many outfits out of one pair of curtains we all know how much fabric making clothes takes so how she managed there must have been a lot of curtains is all I can say um, and so yes yeah, so to use uh, stash fabric sew up a free pattern make your pa your garment up in the month of March and then use that hashtag so frugal 22 to post your entry on the 31st of March which is kind of the entry day um, it's not a judged thing but there are prizes so it's sort of a randomly picked prize um, situation I think I believe there are a number of prizes although I don't think those have necessarily been announced um, there will be a number of vloggers that will be uploading videos in the run-up with ideas and inspiration and I will be taking part in that bit this year so that's really um really exciting last year I took part as somebody that just made a, an item but this year I will be um, uploading a video in relation to it and obviously making something as well so that's super exciting thank you so much to Sam and Ruan for hosting it, it it's really exciting and last year definitely kind of captured uh, the sewing community um, and I think it definitely will this year as well so do check that hashtag out um, and there'll be more information coming up um, about that on Instagram and on um, Sam and Ruan's challenges uh, not challenges YouTube channels so I will obviously link all of their information in the um, description box and don't forget to um, have a look at their channels anyway because they're both fantastic I absolutely love watching their channels even before all this kind of came about um, they were up on my list of people that I really like to watch another challenge that I'm looking to take part in this year again is so yet so yellow for endo now this is run by Jess from so what if I sew uh, she uh, is championing about um, awareness for endometriosis. One in 10 women suffer from endometriosis um, and it takes, I think, women on average eight years to be diagnosed, which is a huge amount of time to be living um, with symptoms of it, which can be very, very extreme in some people's cases and really quite debilitating. Um, it's something that's quite close to my heart. I don't suffer from it myself, but family members do. So it is something that I do like to take part in. So the idea with So Yellow for Endo is that you sew up a garment um, in a yellow based fabric. Um, I'm not quite sure 
what date Jess is looking for those to be posted by. So I will, um, when that's announced, I will um, let you guys know that on the channel, my channel as well. But as always, I'll link all the details that I do have in the description box below. And obviously Jess's um, information. Again, Jess has got a lovely YouTube channel. Um, she's really um, fun to watch, much younger than myself. I think she's only about 25, um, but she's so fun to watch. She's got a lovely bubbly energy about her. Um, so do check her out as well. And another thing that I will be doing in March is a collab with um, Adele, who is Sofa Serenity. Um, again, Adele has got a lovely um, YouTube channel. Uh, she is a self-proclaimed um, fabric addict um, so if you like a fabric haul you'll definitely like um, Adele's videos there are lots of fabric hauls she's absolutely brilliant she's very got a very infectious personality and so do check her out so yes we're going to come together to do a collaboration I won't go into any details about that at the moment because I don't want to give anything away but another sort of exciting um prospect on the horizon for me so um yeah we will be uploading videos at some point in march so do watch out for those as well so in terms of plans for this week i am looking to sew up my uh jesse coat again uh, that's a pattern by sew over it i was talking about that last week i've already cut it out so it's in this fabric here um, this is just one of the pieces. It's a boucle fabric. I picked this up from Pound Fabrics. Uh, it was super cheap. It was two pound a metre. I got three metres, so six pound for for the fabric for a coat. I mean, that's just insane, isn't it? Uh, so it is kind of a, a toile um, fabric for me. Uh, it's got a, a lovely soft ins on the inside, um, a slightly rougher texture on the outside. Um, I was saying last week that it's not a fabric that I'm absolutely buzzing about, um, but it's definitely growing on me and I'm hoping that once it comes together, um, it will look quite good. So fingers crossed that one sews up quite nicely. Um, it's not a lined um, situation, so I'm hoping that that will come together quite quickly. The other thing I'm hoping to do is start on my uh, collab project that I'm working on with Adele on. Um, I've sent the pa that pattern off to be printed. I haven't had that one back yet and I haven't quite decided on fabric and things yet. Um, but hopefully I'll make a start, even if it's just cutting that one out. Um, and the other one that um, other thing that I might look to do is to make a start on this fabric. because I just love it so much. Have I got that up the right way? Yes, I have. Um, yeah, I love this fabric so much. I think it's super fun, super cute. Um, and I think um, it will make something really lovely for my boys. However, if I do go for the colour blocking option, I'm not sure I've got anything any black French terry so um, hmm, we'll have to see on that one whether that comes together or not but I'm sure if I don't start that one then I'll come up with something else to make <laughs> so uh, watch this space so folks that's all for me today I really hope you have a lovely week I hope you've enjoyed today's video and as I've said before if you do like it do press that like button and don't forget to subscribe as well please do leave me a comment uh, of what you think of my Nova coat and I will see you again really soon so take care happy sewing bye bye